I call this meeting I call this meeting to order of the Board of Supervisors of January 8, 2013. Everyone please uh, find a seat. I'll just remind you at this point because we have a whole uh, new crowd. Please remember to silence your phones. Please either turn them off or put them on vibrate uh, so that they won't interrupt the proceedings. Uh, next, I'm going to ask the uh, clerk to do the roll call. Supervisor Bronson. Present. Supervisor Carroll. Here. Supervisor Elias. Para civile. Supervisor Miller. Present. Chairman Valadez. Present. Let the record show all members are present. Is uh, Pastor Jean uh, Schooning here? All right. Um, in that case, uh, we'll go ahead and do a moment of silence uh, before uh, the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by Supervisor Elias. Everyone, please stand for a moment of silence. On this morning, when we remember our friends that we love uh, on this day two years ago, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We move on to item number four. Um, Pause for pause, and today we have Officer Bowden with Paulina. And I think Paulina may already have a taker. Good morning. Uh, this is Paulina. She is a rescue dog from our facility from Pima Animal Care Center on Silver Bell. She was uh, not being properly cared for in her home, and she was a pretty big dreadlocked mess when we received her. She's since been groomed. She's quite a sweet little thing despite her mistreatment and she's available for adoption. We are running an adoption special right now as part of the No More Petless Homes program. If you weren't aware, there are only 39% of the homes that have dogs and 33% have cats. So there is a big gap of homes that need some pets in them. So as part of that promotion, we're running an adoption special that will be $13 for each animal, uh, plus the $15 licensing fee for adult dogs, which means four months and older, so Paulina will be $13 plus a $15 licensing fee. That's quite a deal, considering she alteration, spay or neuter is included with that, which you can't even get a vet visit for $13. It includes her shots and um, her microchipping. If you've ever microchipped an animal, that can be quite expensive as well. That's included in the adoption fee. Miss Paulina, as I mentioned, is, is a, uh, available for adoption immediately. Our facility opens at noon today. We're located at 4000 North Silver Bell. You can reach our licensing department if you have questions. That's 243-5969. If you're not able to adopt an animal or, or your allergies, something like that, but you do want to help out the homeless pets, you can go to our website and there is a donation spot you can click on where there's a cat and a dog on there. It's www.pimaanimalcare.org. If you're unable to donate financially, but you have time on your hands, we always welcome volunteers. We have many, many dogs that love to take walks in the park. We have a beautiful lake behind our facility, which is fantastic for walking the dogs. So if you've got some time on your hands, come on down, sign up for volunteering, and we'd be happy to get you matched up with the dog so you can get some fresh air yourself, and so can the dogs. We do think we have a taker, possibly, for this dog, but I do, do assure you that there are many, many, many other dogs that are equally deserving and available for adoption. If you have a dog already and you're concerned that they may not get along, you can make arrangements to bring your dog down and meet the new dog so you can make sure that they're going to get along before you have a fight in your home. So, um, <laughs> mostly a fight for your attention, I'm sure. Um, in any case, please come on down to our facility to check out the animals. There are plenty of animals available, very deserving animals. Um, I think they're better than the pet shop animals. So please come on down to Silver Bell location at 4000 North Silver Bell. Take a look at our animals. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Elias. Well, Mr. Chairman, I would say that this is a swearing dog, but um, you know, it's probably not very complimentary. But I understand there's a taker. But uh, in the crowd, there's also a giver. And Dan has uh, generously agreed to uh, 
pay the load on uh, adopting this dog because uh, he's always so generous in his nature when he comes here and speaks about uh, our animal friends. So thank you very much, Danny. We appreciate that. You know yeah. what? Since I think the taker will has already offered the fee, perhaps Dan, if he's volunteering, if someone else adopts an animal, it could, if there's, you know. You know, that would be really great if, if we could do that, Dan. That way uh, we get two animals out there uh, to uh, deserving families and, and people who want to take care of them. So that would be great. Thank, thank you very much. And thank you uh, for coming out today from Animal Care. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I believe, uh, Supervisor Miller, you have a point of personal privilege? Yes, I'd like to uh, take a <coughs> moment to recognize uh, two young men who are in the audience. Uh, one of them is Mr. Luke Jones. I'd ask him to stand up. He is a six-year-old boy who counted all of my campaign signs and said he would vote for me uh, in the campaign because I was smiling in every sign every day. <laughs> and there's Luke back there. <coughs> and his mom, Jennifer, is a teacher at Cross Middle School, and she is also here with him. Nice, Jennifer. Thank you. And then I just found out the son of a Pima County employee is six years old, and his name is Dakota Couture, and he's here with his mom this morning, and he also voted for me. He helped his mom fill out her ballot. So I'd like to thank you all for coming, and of course, all of my friends and supporters here today. You're all fabulous. Thank you for coming. Any other points? If not, I'm going to go ahead and ask uh, the presiding judge of Superior Court, Sally Simmons, to please come up, and all the uh, board and uh, roll officers to please come up in front here, and we'll be lined up in front, judge, if you could uh, swear us in. And then after that, the we'll, board will uh, come back to the dais and uh, do a 30-minute recess. Please, everyone. Will each of you please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I mother in law. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And defend them against all enemies. And defend them against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office of and state your office name. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God, or so I do affirm. So help me God, or so I do affirm. Thank you all, congratulations. Thank you.
can change your mind. For those of you who are thinking of leaving, we're about to take a 30 minute recess if you'd like to hang on for a few moments. Why don't you just stand and we'll take a 30 minutes? Constables and justices? Will the neighbors just come up? Are they, are they here? Are, are the constables or the JPs here and needing a swearing in? All right. No, I, I think everybody was in the front. All right. At this point, uh, at this point, let's uh, let's go ahead and we'll take a 30-minute recess so that everyone has a chance to mingle. And at the at about 9:45, we will resume the dais and continue the meeting. So we will take a 30-minute uh, recess to the sound of the gavel.
Call this meeting back to order. Would the board members please uh, come to the dais? All right, changes to the agenda, page six, item number 16A, transportation traffic ordinances, ordinance number 2013-2, regulating parking on Ski Run District 4. Staff requests the item be removed from the agenda. Without objection, those are the only changes to the agenda. We'll move on to item number six, Board of Supervisors Procedural Organization. Item number A, selection of uh, chair, vice chair, and acting chair. Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you. Uh, I would like to place a nomination at this point. Um, you as chairman, myself as vice chairman, and Supervisor Elias as acting chairman. Second. Uh, for a period uh, to end December 31st, uh, 2013. 13. <laughs> the first, let's do the first meeting of January. First meeting of January. 2014. Uh, was there a second, Super? Okay. Motion before us is the selection of uh, myself as chairman, uh, Supervisor Bronson as vice chairman, Supervisor Elias as acting chairman, to a term ending the first meeting of January 2014. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it, five to zero. Moving on to the appointment of uh, the clerk of the board. Mr. Chairman, I at this time would like to move that we appoint Robin Bergode, uh, Clerk of the Board. Second. Motion a second to appoint uh, Robin Bergode uh, to clerk, uh, position of Clerk of the Board. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Right, I uh, <laughs> you can until I call the vote. <laughs> Think carefully. <laughs> By a five to zero vote, motion carries. Oh, this one's a tough one. Item number C, appointment of Mr. the Sergeant at Arms. <laughs> Supervisor Elias. If I could, I'd like to uh, appoint uh, Jim Modkin, Sergeant at Arms, for uh, Board of Supervisors. Second. Motion and a second to approve, uh, appoint uh, Sergeant James Ogden, the Sergeant at Arms for the Board of Supervisors. Any discussion? Really, any discussion? <laughs> <laughs> any other I don't. <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Congratulations, Robin and Jim. And let's see. I wanted to go ahead and uh, do the next item, item 7A. Uh, and uh, at precisely 10:10, uh, we also wanted to ring a bell. So I've asked the clerk to let us know when that time is appropriate. Uh, today. Uh, as uh, Supervisor Elias uh, alluded to before the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, we remember uh, those friends that we lost, those friends whose lives have changed, and indeed our entire community, um, the tragic events of, uh, of January 8th. Um, I'm, uh, it is, I think it changed uh, our community, how we view things. Um, I think to a great degree, the positive that came out of it is we became one community, uh, and we've remained that. And I think that's really important. Um, I'm also happy to announce that today, uh, sometime after the board meeting, we will go live on the behavioral health website, which uh, people will be able to access from the pimacounty.gov website. Uh, for any question having to do with behavioral and uh, mental health, um, including do I need help? How do I get help? Uh, I know somebody who might need help, but what are some of those basic questions? So that has all come about since, uh, since it's dating to a great degree because of this. Um, so I want to go ahead and, uh, and uh, move the proclamation for the January 8th uh, Remembrance Day. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. A motion carries. I'm going to ask uh, Ross Zimmerman uh, to please come up and join me at the podium. Mr. Chairman, so 
I was going to ask your indulgence and ask uh, the rest of the members of the Board of Supervisors to join you and Gabe's dad down there. Please come down. And now that we're joined by the board, I'm going to go ahead and, and read the proclamation. Whereas the tragedy of January 8, 2011, uh, that resulted in the deaths of Christina Taylor Green, Dorothy Dot Morris, Judge John Roll, Phyllis Schmeck, Dorwin Stoddard, and Gabe Zimmerman, and injuries to 13 others, including Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, inflicted terrible suffering on the victims, their loved ones, and this community. And whereas in the aftermath of that heartbreaking morning, Pima County residents organized vigils, memorials, events to remember and celebrate the lives of those victims and the spirit of the community, including ringing bells on the anniversary of the tragedy. And whereas Pima County residents have worked to create charitable funds, programs, and other living memorials that support civility, tolerance, and respect. And whereas Pima County residents are all connected through compassion, strength, kindness, and goodwill despite our differences and recognize the shared humanity that came forth that day and in the weeks and months that followed. Now therefore be it resolved that Pima, the Pima County Board of Supervisors hereby proclaims Tuesday, January 8th, 2013 to be January 8th Remembrance Day and encourages all Pima County residents to join together with friends and neighbors and the community to ring bells on January 8th 2013 at 10 10 a.m. in honor and remembrance of those lost and injured and to keep alive their spirit in rededicating themselves to activities and causes they love such as helping others enjoying the great outdoors and civic engagement passed and adopted this eighth day of January 2013 I'm gonna go ahead and ask uh, Gabe to, to say a few words and then Oh, I'm sorry, Ross. Thanks. Thanks. I'm Ross Zimmerman. I'm Gabriel Zimmerman's father. Two years ago, in 10 minutes or 15 minutes, I got a call from Gabe's fiance, Kelly O'Brien, to the effect that Gabrielle had been shot and we didn't know what was going on and everybody was headed to University Medical Center. We went there to look for Gabe and eventually found out that he wasn't there because he wasn't with us anymore. Uh, he died at the scene, we think rushing to help uh, Ron and Gabrielle. Ron saw him fall beside him, no longer with us. Uh, we miss Gabe every day, but we take great comfort from the support of this community. It's been a huge help to us and I wanted to specifically thank the county and the Board of Supervisors because it was the county working with the Arizona Trail that very, very quickly after the tragedy established the Gabe Zimmerman Trailhead and built a beautiful s facility there. They've built, they've set up the Christina, Christina Taylor Green Park, which is also a wonderful facility. They're working, I'm part of the January 8th Memorial Foundation trying to come up with a proper community memorial or memorials and the county is working closely with us. They, one of their representatives is on our board and they've been a huge help, they've been a huge support. Uh, Richard Elias was our Master of Ceremonies at Beyond on Saturday. I can't tell you how much I appreciate living in Tucson and being part of Pima County. Thank you, Ross. Good, good morning. Thank you, Mr. Zimmerman, of course. Thank you very much uh, for being here this morning. I just wanted to say this remembrance came a little early for us this weekend. Of course, there was a lot of events that helped us engage the great outdoors, and I myself was at your son's 
trailhead where we hiked uh, down through the, and under the trussle and back through the Arizona Trail. It was uh, a bonding event for all those that attended. Uh, of course, uh, Emily Gabe's mom was there, and uh, many people will be touched by that uh, that day um, throughout the course of history of Tucson. But I just want to say personally, I loved your son. You know, I spent many times and uh, many sometimes stressful moments together, but mostly he had a very uplifting and uh, resilient spirit, much like yourself. And he got that from you. Uh, your your remarkable courage to be here today and your your recovery from, from the event continues, I'm sure, but we, we do appreciate you being here and, and God bless you for all the work that you're doing. I was, I was just gonna add that, uh, you know, I, I was really lucky uh, to have known Gabe from the time he was a toddler at countless uh, community meetings that his mom would attend and uh, great young man and uh, I, for one, refuse to be sad or negative about the whole thing, but to focus on the positivity that he brought us all and that uh, this great spirit that Tucson has. And in accordance with that, uh, I would like to thank or held accountable uh, Rhonda Botfield, who had me doing the Zumba dance on uh, <laughs> Saturday at the Beyond event with uh, Mayor Rothschild. Thank you very much, and great to see you here, Gabe's dad. Is there video? I want to see the video. It's not pretty. <laughs> no, I, and there have been many good things that came out of this. And I think uh, most importantly is the emphasis on civil discourse. Um, I know we, our office worked uh, in liaison with Gabe on many issues that confronted our shared constituencies. And um, Gabe had an amazing work ethic, and we certainly, certainly miss him. But uh, I think uh, in in the spirit of a remembrance that um, one of the things he was uh, par excellence at was civil discourse, and we need to take that further. <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. Zimmerman. I did not know your son, but I was in contact with that office a lot, and I always got a response, and I'm sure he was behind many of those responses. And um, I appreciate you being here this morning, and our prayers and our thanks are with you and with your family. And um, I, I think there has been a lot of positive with the parks, and, and a lot of good things are happening in the community and with the people. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Mr. Zimmerman. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and move to the addendum agenda because I need to make sure that uh, at 1010 uh, we're able to ring the bell. So I'm going to go move uh, to addendum agenda uh, item or page one, Board of Supervisors of Senior Southern Boards, Flood Control District Board. Mr. Chairman, I'll move that item as well as, uh, oh, no, I can only move the one, Flood Control District Correct. World, Real Property and Resolution 2013, FC1. Second. Motion and a second to approve item uh, or a flood control district board real property resolution number 2013-FC1. Any discussion? Um, I had a question for the staff. Certainly. Um, I looked on the map guide and I wasn't sure who actually owns that property. I wasn't able to see who owns the property. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Alderberry. Supervisor Miller. It is a property that uh, the person who owns it has been deceased for a number of years, and so there isn't any real clear title uh, to the property, and so the way in which to clear title is to through condemnation. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. 
Ayes have it. Stadium District Board contract. Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Elias. I'm going to move Stadium District Board contract with Williams Entertainment in the amount of $31,900 revenue. And that's uh, contract number CTN KSC 13000195. Second. And I assume you're going to go to the game. I am going to go to the game, and it sounds like a lot of fun. It's over at Kino Stadium on the 18th of, of this the month. month. Okay. So please feel free to come out and enjoy uh, some great college football. Mr. Chairman. Mr. President Carroll. I approve of the contract, but I also wanted to say I attended the game last year. It was well worth it. I saw the Supervisor Elias there. I hope and encourage all those in the audience as well as watching will spread the word that if we'd like to keep this all-star college football game, we need some attendance. Ticket sales are slow, obviously. Uh, now that the holidays are over, we hope that we can get a better attendance of this event than even last year. And uh, the great news is, is uh, we have some great prospects for the NFL that have signed up to play in this game. If you've enjoyed college bowl games uh, during the holidays, you'll certainly enjoy this game, I guarantee it. If you're not satisfied with your with your attendance at the game, please see me and we'll try to work something out for you. <laughs> you know, uh, Supervisor Make it even Carroll, more exciting. Uh, I was hoping that this game can hang in there for at least a few more years so maybe we can see uh, a star <coughs> named uh, Carlos Carroll come back and play in the college all-star game well, here from uh, it's, it's SMU, nice. I believe he's It's very attending. nice of you to say yes, he attends SMU and he was highlighted last year because they did identify all those all-stars from southern Arizona in the state. Uh, at the game and Carlos as, as well as Blake Martinez and many other uh, high school stars of that year were, were, were introduced at halftime. I'm not sure if that's going to happen again this year, but I am sure that Carlos made the list again. So thank you for mentioning that. Very good. All right, all those in favor of the item under uh, uh, on the addendum agenda for uh, Stadium District Board contract, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, I'm going to skip item number one, move to item 2A, B, and 3. I'll move those items. Second. Motion and a second to approve items number 2A, B, and 3 under the addendum agenda. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. At this time, it is about to be 10-10. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask that that, uh, that each of us uh, ring the bell once, and we'll pass it along. And at the end, Richard, if you could have Mr. Zimmerman come up and ring the bell last, okay? At this time, if we could take a moment of silence. Thank you. At this time, I, I'm going to go ahead and move uh, to item number one on the addendum agenda. Uh, a uh, a uh, item that I've placed on there is the county administrator's employment contract, uh, and I'm going to move the item. Second. Is there a, uh, there's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the item, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Nay. Uh, motion carries by three to two. Okay, moving on to the back to the regular agenda. We're going. Congratulations, Mr. Huckleberry. By the way, 
Welcome back. He doesn't You're look happy. You're stuck with another four years of us, <laughs> Chuck. That's, that's what it means. Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Carroll. Mr. Chairman, I do want to commend Mr. Huckleberry. Running a county in these economic times is not an easy task, and Mr. Huckleberry has done an admirable job, in my opinion. <coughs> Pima County has reduced the burden for residents previously saddled with higher budgets and a greater number of employees in past years with little reduction in services. Pima County will grow even more efficient with fewer employees and lower costs in several areas according to the goals and objectives the county administrator has laid out. Mr. Huckleberry, Chuck, has been uh, very disciplined in, a, in his approach to significant financial challenges this, these last few years of the recession, mm -hmm. and he has had to force cuts and realignments that were long overdue. These spending cuts, together with initiatives like performance management and managed competition, will help in making government a more efficient and accountable steward of public resources. This proposed contract is, is now approved, and I wanted to say that uh, as far as the Republican caucus, we appreciate uh, Mr. Huckleberry's efforts over the years, and we encourage him to continue with the downsizing of government, the more efficient support that we can give. We, we offer that, Mr. Huckleberry. Congratulations on your successful reappointment as county administrator. You are a friend of Pima County. Any other comments? A lot of congratulating for a no vote. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to item number 7B. Civil discourse, civil discourse. Moving on to side item 7B, presentation uh, by the Pima County Health and Regional Wastewater Reclamation Department in the Pima County Sheriff's Department, to the Pima County Sheriff's Department, represented by Lieutenant Jim Barry. Oh, there you go. Okay. Please use this mic. And I'd like to uh, welcome uh, Dr. Garcia, who's our new uh, Department of Health Director. Mr. Chairman and members of the board, each year the Metropolitan Team and Alliance issue Common Ground Awards. And these awards go out to uh, programs and projects in the community that bring the community together and also have a, uh, a, a nice impact on our community. The DisposaMed program we started in 2009 to educate our citizens about uh, protecting our groundwater supplies, dissuading uh, dumping of medications down the toilet, but also to help with the nationwide problem of prescription drug abuse, mostly amongst teens. Uh, 2011 was the first year on record in which motor vehicle accident deaths was trumped by prescription drug abuse. And so our community partners, the DisposeMed program now, we have over 40 member agencies. It's represented by all of our law enforcement groups throughout Pima County, and we couldn't do it without them. They're out, uh, there are eyes and ears, they're out doing these collections each month. In these four years, we've collected over eight tons of medications wow. and about 800 pills per pound, you know, do the math. It's, it's a tremendous amount of, of medications out there and it keeps it off the streets, keeps inventories low in your home so that kids aren't tempted to take those pills and share them and distribute them. So Jim, thank you for all your crew. I appreciate it. On behalf of the, our community resources team, a variety of deputies have gone out and done in the last 11 events that we've done in cooperation with some other civic organizations. We've collected over 1,500 pounds of prescription drugs. So it's, it's quite a haul. I'm actually surprised at the amount of, of unused pres prescription drugs that we pick up at each of these events. But thank you very much on behalf of my team. Just, just to, oh, I'm sorry. No. And just to put it all in perspective, um, just in the last 20 years, the number of prescription de uh, drug deaths has tripled uh, in this country and accounts for over $20 billion of healthcare expenditures. So this is a real public health issue uh, for us and is something that we need to sort of be at the vanguard. Unfortunately, public health is in a neat place, and a neat cubbyhole where we can deal with just one issue. Uh, we have to work across uh, disciplines and across silos, and I think this is a great example of how we in Pima County can be innovative in working across these different platforms to accomplish a, an important public health goal. Thank you, and congratulations. Thank you very much. Brunson. Yeah, I, I want to welcome uh, Dr. Garcia as a member of the team. It's great to see you here. 
And I have um, a question. I mean, I, I, when my mother passed away um, in 2011, I took advantage of the program, the Dispose of Med program. In, in terms of in the medication she was on, ma many elderly people need, you can't recycle the stuff, is that correct? No, you have to dispose, yeah, that's unfortunate. So the current clinical practice is that um, medications that have been prescribed to an individual are not typically, cannot typically be diverted to another individual legally. Um, and so no, there's not a good way of, of using those medications uh, for other folks. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Congratulations. Now we go to Board of Supervisors sitting as other boards, Flood Control District Board, item A12, B12. What's the will of the board? I'll move those items. Second. Motion and a second to approve uh, item A12 and B1 and 2 under Flood Control District Board on the regular agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Moving on to Zoning Enforcement Board of Appeals. Uh, unfinished business from 61912, 61012, 8712, 10912. Uh, case number P11CV00348-2, 13105 East Colossal Cave Road. Do we have a staff report on this one? Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, uh, apparently on yesterday, uh, Mr. <coughs> Astra had sent an email to the clerk of the board requesting uh, another 30-day continuance for this property. Um, I can give you briefly a report. Uh, 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 to my knowledge, um, the uh, hearing uh, officer's deadline for compliance was actually uh, coming up in 10 days, January 18th. Uh, um, I can't speak to the volume of compliance thus far, but um, there has been uh, substantial progress toward compliance, um, and um, I, it sounds like they're attempting to finish that by the deadline. But they've requested a 30-day continuance um, on the item. Mr. Colton. Thank you, and Pleasant good morning. Care. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Colton, I've I've visited the, the site, and like you said, there's been substantial compliance, and the effort is in the direction of full compliance. I've obviously uh, had a lot of concern from people when they saw them tearing down their hay barn and, and pole barns and other things out there, but that's part of the effort that they've been making. Obviously, uh, if, the, if the appellant wishes to get another 30 days to complete that, I hope you have no problem with it. I'm willing to grant that to him. Is that a... Is there any complication there, impediment to doing that today, as far as you can see? M Mr. Chairman, uh, um, Supervisor Carroll, uh, the board can continue the appeal of the hearing officer's decision for the 30 days. Um, if the, uh, if the, uh, 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 Mr. Asta and his client need additional time beyond January 18th, that can only be granted by the, um, hearing uh, officer, right. and I don't know if that has been requested or not at, at this moment. Uh, so well, I can assure you that I don't know either, uh, yeah. but, I, but I can tell you that I'm willing, because of the efforts that they've put into this project thus far, I'm certainly willing to give them the 30 days. They'll have to deal with, uh, I guess it's Jim Portner, is that their hearing? I, I believe so. They'll have to deal with him in, an, in, a, in another uh, arena, but today, um, I'm certainly willing because of the effort and the expense and the, the timeliness of, of their efforts uh, to can give them another 30 days. It seems like a lot of continuances, but you have to know this is a new ownership that took over this project. It, it's, it's had to change title and there were some delays in that and then certainly the effort has been ongoing since. So heretofore, uh, I think that they have good intentions and I'd like to go ahead if the chairman's ready to uh, Move for Go ahead and move for the, uh, to continue the appeal for 30 days. Second. And uh, on P11CV00348-2. Second. 
Motion and a second uh, to approve the 30-day continuance on uh, P11CV00348-2, uh, uh, 13105 East Colossal Cave Road. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Elias. What uh, Board of Supervisors meeting does that take us to in February? <coughs> February 5th. February 5th, okay. Just wanted to make that clear to everybody on the record. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Board of Supervisors is sitting in regular session. Consent calendar. Do we have any Mr. Chairman. Is there anyone here who would like to address the board on a consent calendar item only? If not, Supervisor Elias. Mr. Chairman, seeing no one come forward to address the Board of Supervisors on any of the items on consent, and we have not uh, changed any of the items on consent and amended it in that way, I'll move consent in its entirety. Second. Motion and a second to approve consent in its entirety. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Item number nine. Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Elias. I'm going to move items 9A and B. Second. Motion and a second to approve item number 9A and B. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Moving on to transportation, acceptance of a project, roadway for maintenance, item number 10. I'll move the item. Second. Motion and a second to approve item number 10 under transportation. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Fran uh, hearings, franchises, license, permits, item uh, 11, 12, and 13. Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Carroll. If there's no one here in the audience to contest any of these either agent change, liquor license, or extension of, extension of premises, I'd like to go ahead and close the public hearing and move <coughs> to approve items 11, 12, and 13 under franchises, licenses, and permits. Second. A motion before us is to close the public hearing and approve items 11, 12, and 13. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Health Department, Pima County Code Text Amendment, item number 14, ordinance number 2013-1. Mr. Chair, so as a this is a hearing. Um, is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address us on this code text amendment? If I don't not, have any cards. If not, I'm going to move we close public hearing and approve item 14 and ordinance 2013-1. Motion and a second to close the public hearing and approve item number 14, ordinance number 2013-1. Any discussion? Supervisor Elias. I would just note that this uh, takes care of a loophole that has provided... Uh, um, folks who work in the Greyhound racing industry the opportunity to continue uh, um, giving those animals steroids this closes that loop so that that will not be going on any further all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. all opposed please signify by saying nay ayes have it development services Very good. <laughs> someone might want to explain to Ali what that's about we will. He, he likes to call it develop, developmental services. <laughs> <laughs> Rezoning resolution item number 15, resolution number 2013-2. Mr. Chairman, if there's no one in the audience that wishes to address us on item 15 and resolution 2013-2, I move to close the public hearing and approve the item. I second it. Motion and a second to uh, close the public hearing and approve item number 15 and resolution number 2013-2. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Moving on to items 16 Mr. B. Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Elias. I'm going to go ahead and move items 16 B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and uh, Item number 17, the traffic resolution, and that includes ordinances numbers 2013-3 through 9. And on item 17, it includes resolution 2013-3. Second. Motion and a second to close the public hearing and approve items 16 B through H on item 17 and ordinance number 2013-3 through 9 and 
uh, resolution number 2013-3. Mr. Discussion? Chairman, uh, I would also add that my intent was to close the public hearing on those items as well. I was just That's how I understood it. <laughs> you guys are psychic. <laughs> all those in any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Eyes have it. We uh, move to call to the public. We do have one speaker card. Well, we, we have an addendum. We, we already did. Yeah. The, oh. we did. Did we What's do that? three? Item three on the agenda. Nope. I don't think we can do this. I don't think so either. Madam Yes or no? All right. I thought we had concluded it, but apparently the clerk uh, isn't sure, so we'll go ahead and do item number three. I'll move item three. Second. Oh, uh, I, uh, uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a motion and a second to approve item three on the addendum agenda. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Uh, and before we move to call of the public, I'm going to take a point of personal privilege and certainly welcome Supervisor Miller to the Gang of Five. Thank you. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure having you here and uh, look forward to many happy years. Thank you very much. Going to move to call the public, and I have uh, one speaker card. It's uh, Nick, uh, Nikki Neum. Nimi, I'm sorry. Please come up, identify yourself with the record, and you have three minutes. I didn't hear you. Uh, please identify yourself with the record, and you have three minutes. Okay, I'm Nikki Nimi. I live at 7121 South Oahu Avenue in Tucson. I taught school for 40 years. I retired in 2001. And we moved back to Tucson in 2003. I miss kids. So I started subbing in Sunnyside School District. I'm a certified in science, vocational, and administration. I like Raul Needle, who was principal of Sunnyside at the time. And uh, I stayed there for five plus years. And uh, there were uh, always uh, Tucson public, uh, TD, Tucson police officers at Sunnyside High School every morning, every afternoon, and during the day, uh, armed. And uh, there were 100 teachers plus, and I never heard one teacher complain about the armed police at that school. Um, I was, uh, I taught two times, they had me uh, cover a teacher, teachers who left, they gave me a contract for the rest of the year, and I did three long-term subs for ladies having maternity leave. Um, the teachers are always complaining about something. Not enough this, not enough that, too much this, but never, no guns. They didn't want the, the unarmed people in that school. Um, I think armed administrators or some teachers might be a, a possibility of a filling. Uh, our city police chief Roberto Villasenor uh, said it would cost $13 million to put a cop in each school, $21 million, including all of the uh, uh, charter schools. Uh, our kids are precious. I have four grandkids in schools in Tucson, and uh, not all teachers would be able to do this. Um, some people just couldn't. But there are people, there are some administrators that could. If we couldn't come up with some money for having a, an officer there. A look around, we have officers here. You have a, a, a machine that go, you have to walk through. Uh, city Council, I've gone there since June of 2010, and they implemented that since I started. Uh, and they always have three or four officers. Banks are, are safe, they have guns, they have armed people. There's a lot of people, but the schools are helpless. That principal at that school in Connecticut went down there and threw her life away trying to save those children. She had nothing, nothing but her body. We need to think about what we need to, say, to protect our children. And, and banning guns are not gonna stop crazies. If you can't have a certain kind of gun it's against the law to shoot someone already. You're not going to worry about having the wrong kind of gun to do it. And <coughs> Sorry, I don't usually do this. You, Mr. Zimmerman, I 
No, how bad you must feel. And we need to be, be this is a tough subject. We and need to be. protect our innocent. And we by just throwing out the kids in the in, in, in the um, and, and what happened up there. I was in South Tucson working with Rahina Romero uh, on a graffiti cleanup. And the chief was down there. And eight or nine policemen were down there. And, and up, we got the call that that had happened. It was terrible. And, and I really feel sorry. And I'm very sorry about your loss. Thank you. Thank you. Back and follow up on what he said. Not to comment on the specifics, but to say that we should not be surprised that more mass shootings happen as long as we don't have rational conversations about changing the conditions that lead to those mass shootings. And there's lots of things involved. And I want to see those conversations. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board to call to the public? Seeing none, this meeting stands. Oh. I'm going to ask you to please come up and uh, you identify yourself with the record. You have three minutes, and there's a green card over here afterwards if you could please fill out. Uh, hello. Um, my name is uh, Sergio Mendez. I live at 16340 North Meadowcrest Drive in Catalina. Um, it's good. It's a new year. We have a new person on the board, and uh, I know that it's later on we'll deal with the budget in June, but now that we can start thinking about it, I live in the town, and I've been here before, and, and a lot of us from the town up there have been here. You know, we don't have a government. You are our government. Our roads are collapsing underneath us. There's been no real maintenance in our town. Our, the sheriff's department has just barely started to come back up there after three years of a real presence. We had break-ins. We had vandalism. We had, it, we had just a person who was caught who was a serial burglar in Catalina. We've never had these issues before. And all of a sudden, in the last couple of years, things have just gotten worse, from graffiti to roads to police. We ask you, we ask you, all of you on this board, to please help us. We're getting, we're getting into our wits' ends. Our roads are, are falling apart. Our, uh, there's not much for them to paint when they come and paint the streets and the, and the, the lines on the road. They're painting dirt on the edges. I just, I, we, hope that uh, as you as our government would come and make sure that our roads, are, our money is spent properly, not just in our town, but across the county. I mean, I travel and visit family on Valencia and Cardinal all the way out towards the casino, and the roads are the same. It's tragic, it's sad, and I would hope that this board would do more over the years, not immediately, but I would hope that there is more of a process and I hope that the administrator, Mr. Huckleberry, would do more to help all of us. We're tired of seeing our communities look a little beaten up. It's a little, it's a little um, depressing. We, we would hope that they would look, with all that we pay in taxes, that we would still be able to see our roads and our, our communities look better than they do. We try hard. A lot of us clean a lot in front of our streets. We clean on the sides of our roads. We pick up. But it's not enough. I would hope that this board does more. Thank you. Thank you. Again, please come up, identify yourself for the record. Uh, you have three minutes, and later, if you could pull out a green card. Yeah, I wasn't going to speak until Mr. Mady speak, spoke. Uh, my name is Jerry Altaboni. I happen to live in Oro Valley, and our schools in Oro Valley on the Amphi School District at all the schools have a police car parked uh, in the parking, not the lot, but it, you know, right there on the road there, and they have an officer with an office in the schools. So my feeling is if somebody's going to present a problem, they see that car sitting there. They're certainly not going to approach that school. So that's why I'm des delighted to see that Oro Valley, because I have two grandchildren in Painted Sky, and I'm delighted to see that Oro Valley is providing that particular service to protect our children. And thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to uh, speak to the call of the public? Seeing none, this meeting stands adjourned. <laughs>